big. That's what a dinosaur is, and scary. Hello, I'm Hawk Martha, and this is a review of Jurassic World Dominion, which is the new Jurassic Park movie. What's Jurassic Park? Well, you got your Jurassics, and they're all in a park. Except now, they're not. Now they're running all over the place, running amok. How'd we get here? It all started a hundred million years ago in 1993. The first Jurassic Park was a slam dunk. A slam dunk. Such a slam dunk that the movie rights were purchased before the book was even out. They were like, what? Dinosaur theme park. Yup, that's happening. Fire it up. And it was a big hit. Steven Spielberg, ever heard of him? This was the finale of his three decade blockbuster three-peat. Scary shark, cute alien, scary and cute. Dinosaurs? What works so well about the original Jurassic Park? In a way, it was a culmination of the technology side of movie magic. You will believe man can fly. You will believe man can be silvery goop. And you will believe dinosaurs are real. The plot of Jurassic Park pretty much mirrors the audience's reaction to the movie. Surely Spielberg saw parallels between himself and the John Hammond character. Showman, I'm gonna show you something that'll blow your mind. A dinosaur. But why dinosaurs? Well, I'll tell you, they're big, but not everything big makes a good movie. Warhol's Empire, terrible. Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, grasping at straws. Big, pretty good, but not actually that big. There's a long history of giant menacing movie creatures, and there's a long history of interest in dinosaurs. The key to success when they collided in Jurassic Park is theme park, the theme park element. Jurassic Park is a theme park. A million adaptations of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World weren't cutting it. You go to some mysterious island or whatever and it's all prehistoric and there's dinosaurs? That'd be pretty cool. You'd probably want to look around, see what you can see. Observe. That's not much of a movie though. That's more like visiting a wildlife preserve or a zoo or a theme park. Actually, you know what would be a pretty good movie? If it was presented like one of those theme park vloggers and things started to go awry at the park, like, like a found footage movie. Let's get on that, Hollywood. Anyway, show me the dinos. That's the chorus of dinosaur cinema. Cinema de dinosaur. The original Jurassic Park starts there. We're all showing up to the park, looking for a big old dinosaur. Then we're like, holy shit. Then we're like, okay, take them away now. But they're not going away. They're going to San Diego. Yep, we got five more movies to make. We got Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World, Jurassic Park 3, Diminishing Returns, Jurassic World, a whole new chapter, by which I mean a remake of the original chapter, but with a whole new spin. And by spin, I mean rolly balls instead of Jeeps. Jurassic World 2, everything else we could think of, and now Jurassic World 3. Uh-oh, we gotta think of more stuff. Remember when I said a dinosaur theme park movie was a slam dunk? Turns out, that only works once. Which feels a little silly, right? Are we so jaded that we can watch a beautiful, action-packed blockbuster movie with hyper-realistic, incredibly convincing dinosaurs and be like, eh, it's been done. Yup, we can. Aren't the dinosaurs big and scary enough? I mean, they're even inventing new, bigger, scarier dinosaurs for us. Well, the dinosaurs are big. It's the pictures that got small. Actually, the pictures are huge. It's in IMAX. It's the stakes that got small. There is a bewildering amount of action in the newer Jurassic movies, and it all has pretty much zero stakes. Look, this isn't the old spiel about how CGI has gone too far and movies have to return to their roots. Are we so jaded that a train coming towards the camera doesn't make us flee in terror anymore? The iconic T-Rex escape from the original movie doesn't even make physical sense. There's famously a big cliff that appears out of nowhere. And the kids are pushing away a 15,000 pound animal with a piece of plexiglass. Also, it's always bugged me how the jello jiggles in this scene as a callback to the water cup, but it's not a big T-Rex anymore. It's a much smaller raptor moving almost silently. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. Jurassic Park is telling the story of what would happen if a dinosaur theme park went haywire. Jurassic World Dominion is telling the story of what would happen if we had to make another Jurassic Park movie. Let's see if I can even recount it. All right, so. After the last movie, the dinosaurs all had to escape their island because of a volcano. So now they're all out and around in the world. And uh, there's an evil company that's uh, rounding, that says they're helping, but they're rounding up all the dinosaurs and taking them to the Alps or something. It's gotten the attention of some familiar faces. Yep, that's right. Laura Dern and Sam Neill. And there's a big 
dinosaur locust now, and we're gonna get to the bottom of it. And turns out the evil company hired Jeff Goldblum's character too, so he's there, but he's not evil, he's kind of a double agent. And the characters from the last movie are still there, but not, but a lot of them are just kind of say hi and go away. Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard still invested though, because they took a girl who was cloned. <laughs> There was a girl in the previous movie who was a clone of someone else and she's important for some reason now. And they're keeping her hidden in the woods and also the little pet raptor of Chris Pratt's is around with a baby and their friends. The girl and the little raptor get kidnapped so now, you know, those the new characters are on board. They're trying to get the girl back. The old characters are trying to get to the bottom of this evil genetically mod engineered locust situation that's hurting crops. And they're running around, there's dinosaurs, the dinosaurs get out, you can imagine how that goes. But maybe you can't, because they kind of barely show any dinosaurs doing anything in this movie. There's a lot of scenes where, like, the, the people will be having a knife fight, and then there's dinosaurs doing crazy stuff in the background. Like, show the dinosaurs, or fight, whatever. So then there's a chase through Europe, pretty cool scene. Just kind of... <laughs> The shoehorned in doesn't really have anything to do with anything. And then uh, the evil facility has like kind of built its own Jurassic Park where the dinosaurs live, I guess. And the dinosaurs are getting out. And at the end, they all escape in a helicopter. So there you go. Does that make you want to see the movie? Does it actually matter in any way? Not really. The Jurassic movies are in a post-narrative era. They don't need to make sense or have a good story. But why does it seem to bother people so much? Big dumb action movies are part of our national heritage. Come on. Raptor car chase, dinosaur volcano stampede, what's not to like? Because the movies aren't working. We don't want a bunch of ridiculous action set pieces. Remember when some leaked sequel ideas made the rounds like 10 years ago, where the raptors learned to shoot guns and stuff, and it was like, I can't believe how misguided that would be. Now I pine for the simplicity of a raptor shooting a gun. Those halcyon days. All right, look, we want to see a dinosaur on a deep, visceral level. For all of human history, we've had a strange, heightened relationship to these big ancient creatures. They walked the same earth as us. They were real. And yet, it's impossible for us to wrap our heads around it. For thousands of years, cultures across the world have come up with explanations for dinosaur fossils. They were dragons. They were griffins. They were gods. They were dogs. The original Jurassic Park is a modern, science-embracing way to process how we live in a natural world that once contained giant, terrifying reptile birds. If in some magic way the dinosaurs came back, this is how it would go down. We'd put them in a zoo, and they'd break out. Because they're pre-zoo. They're a 90s bitch. 86 million 90 BC. They break out because life finds a way. And that's the iconic line from the movie because, okay, well, it's the thesis of the movie. But it's the thesis because that's what's tugging at our brain strings. We're alive. Dinosaurs were alive. We share life. We feel connection to all living things. Well, most of us do. And a living thing that no longer exists, that we'll never get to connect with, can stir a deep, time-traversing yearning. And confronting the sheer size of these animals is awe-inspiring and frightening. Because dinosaurs are, say it with me, a diverse group of reptiles that were the dominant terrestrial life form on Earth during the Mesozo- No! Big! That's what a dinosaur is. And scary! And in spite of that, we want to see them. And hear them. And touch them. And bop them on the head if we have to. And if there's ever going to be another good Jurassic Park movie, it's got to start there. Not the bopping on the head part, but everything else. No more raptor friends, no more lasers, no more cast reunions, no more Chris Pratt, no more Anabtanosaurus, no more jetpacks. Were there jetpacks? Honestly, can't even remember. That's how much shit they've thrown in these movies. There's like 40 seconds of Dominion that works, and 20 of them are when two little kids are scared of a giant locust swarm and hide in a barn. That was scary. And it's just from a big bug. One big bug done right is worth a thousand laser raptors. And you can quote me on that. You can quote me on that. Jurassic World Dominion is terrible. See it now in IMAX with a big popcorn. Big. That's what a popcorn is. Have fun.